ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the DSEF Open Forum on coaching. I'm so excited for this session today. For those of you who have been following the Women in Leadership series, my name is Ben Dixon. I serve as the president of the Direct Selling Executives Forum and CEO of Naxum. And today I'll be here with our host, Gail Ansaldo. And as we were putting together uh, the session on how to coach in a virtual world, we were, are more excited than ever uh, to bring Adrian Murphy here to the call today. Now, before uh, Gail brings Adrian on out and we walk through some of your questions and connecting, I wanted to share with you background on Adrian. Uh, many of you are familiar with companies like Cenogens, it works. Places you've served like Perfectly Posh and Selpata in the past. Many of you in the group are previous Selpata people at times. So I know we've run into <laughs> all kinds of connections before. As a brief background, Adrienne has over 25 years. So she's been coaching since she was three years old, right? Of experience in the direct selling channel as an executive, as well as in the field. So she's been on both sides. So you're hearing a voice of someone who's been a field leader and on the corporate side. Very important for our talk today. She's an energetic thought leader. I want to tell you that twice because she is passionate. She's a coach, mentor who loves building authentic relationships. Her motto is always lead with love and grace. Adrian, thank you so much for being here with us today. Absolutely. I am super, super excited as you, mm -hmm. you know, I'm an excited person. And those that, that do know me from the company that you listed, it's, it's almost sometimes my enthusiasm is unbridled. And a lot of people are like, she cannot be that excited, but guess what? I am. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Well, it, this is such a great topic and just looking forward to plugging into it with the questions the field, the, the folks of the Direct Selling Executives Forum have had. So so with that, uh, Gail, go ahead and kick us off. Let's start the show. Welcome to the DSEF, everybody. And for this episode, we're going to talk about, as Ben mentioned, it's going to be how to coach in the virtual world. Now, with the rise of remote work and digital communication, coaching in the virtual setting has become a vital skill for leaders in the direct selling industry and in every industry, actually. So whether or not you're a seasoned coach or new to the game, uh, this episode will definitely be packed with insights and strategies mm -hmm. that will help everybody thrive in the direct selling industry. Our first question is actually, where would you invite a company to start with coaching in a virtual world? I always say it's a great question because sometimes it is such a different engagement. I always like people to access the need. So from a business perspective, it's like, you know, trying to figure out what you want. Are you, are you focusing on your leaders? Are you focusing on your retention? So people that are just kind of, you know, right in the thick of things are rowing with you. Are you focusing on the onboarding? Well, the interesting thing is it's all three, right? That makes the machine run. For companies, I think you have to have, or, or that skill staff that is willing to, and maybe there are different levels of, of their expertise, but I think that's one of the things that we always think about. How do we start? How, what does it look like? But I can't just answer it in one answer. So I think you have to think about how accessible do we want to be as a company, right? What is the convenient to the, the group that we're coaching? Is it cost effective? So when I was going through my notes, you know, I was thinking about this after Ben and I talked and I go, okay, so is it flexible? You know, so mm -hmm. those are the things, accessibility, convenience, uh, cost effective, which we're all looking at our pockets right now, flexibility, technology. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. It's a global outreach. So many of the direct selling companies, obviously we have a global reach, right? So that's important as well. And then the data behind the coaching. So I think that that's important now that neat thing about having virtual training or virtual coaching mm -hmm. is you've got some data to put in it, right? Because mm -hmm. I remember doing sticky notes. I wish you could kind of see my board. I have a sticky sure. note down here and I have them color coded and all that good stuff of like, talk to her. Okay. Now I have to talk to her. What did they used to call that? Someone on the call will probably know, but anyway, it was kind of that follow-up system. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's really the answer, right? It's just about where mm -hmm. you are as a company and what you're trying to achieve as far as starting out with coaching. But I can tell you one thing, and I'll say this now, and I'll probably say it at the end. When you talked about my bio leading with love, you have to love them where they are. Mm. Right. And I think wherever that is, you have to love them where they are. So I would start with that question. Where is the field? Where do we want them to be? And then how do we engage and make that more inclusive than exclusive. You know, so that was a long answer. Yeah, but there, there's some great pieces we got to unpack together, Adrian. This is good. The last one you just said, love them where they are. I hear this story many times with clients in the space and others because it's a volunteer army, right? These are not employees. Yes. And so sometimes yes. uh, we can expect them to be something they're not. And when we do, we're going to be disappointed. 
at the end of the day. Right. And compare it to children. Like if you ever expect your kids to be something they're not, you're going to have a horrible experience as a parent where you're going to be like pouring them, pouring into saying, oh, are you ready for this or that? And it's just not where they're at. Um, and it's the same thing with a volunteer army. Or if you think about running any kind of volunteer organization, whether it was a not-for-profit or your church, you're going to run that team differently than you're going to run a team of employees that are earning W-2 yep. income inside of the space. Yeah. I love, but I, you I, know love what? I love that thought you just shared. Yeah. Then I want to say something that you talked about the volunteer army. What I've been researching just from emotional intelligence coming out of the last few years, even W-2 employees are thinking like volunteer <laughs> army. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they are. So say that someone who has a spouse or partner that is in the W-2 world, guess what? A lot of those employees are thinking like that. I saw a great, it was a little comic strip and it said it was all these sheep, right? And so the guy couldn't sleep. So he was counting sheep, but <laughs> the head sheep was like, none of them want to go to work. So it was kind of like, you know, so now the W-2 is like, uh, you know, kind of like that. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just think that people realize coming out of the pandemic that they have more choices. I think direct That's sales good. has taught the rest of the world a lot about, you know, how to to basically work with people and then what the human experience really should look and feel like. And a lot of that is driven through how we do it all, you know, all the time is through coaching. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about is you talked about expectations. And I think I've shared this with you before is that expectations, you have to be clear with expectations. You have to be clear with boundaries, right? But people rise to the level of expectation that they are given. So that is why I said, love them where they are. Because by that you can say, okay, well, based on where you are, I completely understand, been there myself. So this is going to be, you know, the expectation of whatever it is. So people yeah. rise to the level of expectations that they're giving. And like children, as humans, we need that, right? Because we yeah. want to be either rewarded or redirected or whatever that is. So we can be successful, whatever success looks like for the individual. That's so good. So good. The other part you talked about in identifying the need was the difference between leadership training, skills training, and onboarding. And how if you're missing right. one of these elements, bus is broken, right? Something's not moving forward yeah. here the way it could. Unpack before we move forward onboarding just a little bit further. When we're thinking through onboarding, what have you found to be critical inside of the, we'll get to talk more about frameworks in a moment, but inside of onboarding as a whole, what would you say are the biggest things to be thinking about when someone's getting started on a coaching culture? Getting them started, setting that expectation out of the gate. And what, you know, being in the field, that's one of the things as a leader, I would say what we're going to do. So it's a plan. When you follow the plan, we know it works. Mm -hmm. So this is what we're going to do in your first three days. I'm going to call you, make sure that you check, you know, that you've logged on, you know, you wouldn't, I mean, no one would be shocked, but sometimes I've talked to people and it's two weeks and their box is still sitting in their living room, right? Mm. So I set that expectation that we're gonna be on a weekly call, 15, 20 minutes for the first 90 days. Now I know that's very old school, but it works because I can tell you exactly where someone's gonna land in their first 90 days. It's always, I can nail it almost every time because like, 30 days, I'm gonna be like, okay, so they're doing this 60 days. Okay, so I know this potentially could be my next leader. So that's why I think it's so important when you're onboarding is this really tethering with them, setting the expectation you're going to be with them every step of the way. You can always ask questions. Barriers doesn't mean I'm going to answer it at 2 a.m. I think for onboarding, it is letting them know, setting the expectation you're going to be with them through the first, and some people may be 30 days, you know, depending on your fast start program. My timeline, it was always 90 days. And I think if it is 30 days in your program, I would literally still connect with them, you know, as they feel or as they're engaging throughout that 90 day process. Because we know that, I mean, I think the statistics used to be 90% of the attrition happened in the first 90 days. I sure. think we're seeing it a little bit earlier. That's why coaching is so important to get them out of the gate. Agree. Well, and that's the where your the data element you pulled out is just critical. Yeah. So it's if you're even tracking what you're doing, what's working, what's not. You know, the biggest gains we've seen of you know two groups of really smart executives and how do they outpace their peers over here is just the questions they're asking of their data at the end of the day and and what they're yeah. actually collecting in the in the space today. There's so much more on that we can talk about. Yeah, People and I I think Ben also is that you have to speaking of expectation, Joni Rogers. Conte told me this is 
I didn't really realize we would always do what was called a success wheel. But basically the success wheel were what's important to you. And then it would back into your timeline. Right. And it's unbelievable how much time we really have. So I think in virtual coaching, you have to say it's quick. We're going to get down. We're going to tune in, connect, boom and out. So if they go, oh, I've got 15 minutes, you know, everybody's got 15 minutes. So helping them identify that I'm not talking about this long, drawn out, you know, war and peace novel. Not that war and peace is bad, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, you know, it's I'm going to meet you where you are. Right. Mm -hmm. And then setting that that expectation. So I think that a lot of times people think that timing is is an issue and it's really not because if it's important to you right you'll make time to do it so i think that that's important as far as virtual coaching as well agreed our second question is what framework would you suggest following when making decisions in the field or in yeah how to coaching? set up this coaching program so we get that mm -hmm. question a lot in the panel adrian's executives are saying okay want to implement these thoughts thanks for the high level thoughts but is there a framework to follow is there any kind of structure you can give me of how I do this thing. You know, that's what they mean when they ask that from the forum. That's interesting because I'm sure that I'm answering the question thoroughly and, and, and correctly. Is it how to coach or how to fit it in, how to approach it or all of the above? It's how to create a culture of coaching in an organization. Ah, you know, they're thinking of, yeah. hey, we got to have a culture of coaching in a virtual world and we need a framework. Is it that we do you know, group events during the week and one-on-ones here? Is there technology we think through? Like, well, how do you actually make what you just said happen? And you said, love them where they are. Uh, well, how do I do that? Yeah. Is there a framework? Yeah, to I, I think it's, that's where the data comes in, right? So it depends on the subgroup that you're doing. You know, yeah. your newbies, your little green beans, you know exactly where they are, right? But I think as a leadership team who probably has a department, you know, whether it's a sales coach, a regional sales director, I'm a huge strategy person. So I look at the numbers. So I look at who's pacing based on what our expectation is. So in our world, it's the compensation okay. plan, okay. right? So I'm looking at that because I do believe that coaching is a reward. I understand that not everybody responds to it or needs it. But the great thing about the little green beans, the, the newbies in the first 90 days, they don't know what they don't know. So that you've got that growing, right? Are going. But I think the biggest thing is that those you're trying to retain. So they've done their 18 months, you know, it's an 18 month learning curve. And then your leaders. So I used to always do it based on the numbers or lack thereof. So for example, if I see someone that's pacing and is really doing, she's hit every incentive trip. She hit her, her fast start. Uh, she's a, she's a brand new leader at the first rung of leadership. I know I need to be coaching her. Right. Um, but if she's a leader, she went up, maybe she went down, something happened. There was a life event. I'm going to talk to her too and go, how can we get you back where you're comfortable? I always think about, you have to think about as, as an organization, what is reasonable? Because I've talked to a lot of people and they said, man, I was making X here, but now I'm making here. So I go, okay, that's great. Do you want to get back to X? If you do, that's fantastic. But what's reasonable for you that's going to keep the wheels on the bus and, and have you join your experience as a consultant or a distributor? For me, if I had to start ground zero, I always look at the numbers of where people are. And it really will tell you a story and create that curiosity, maybe someone you've missed, maybe someone you need to touch a little bit more. Onboarding, that's always going to be an expectation that I think should be, should be given. I know a lot of companies have gone with LMS systems, with videos, and I get that, but I still think there's something to a human connection. I really yeah. do. We're in the people business, and I really think, and I know I talked about technology, but one of the things in virtual coaching everybody's talking about is this AI and this chat GPT. It is not ever, in my opinion, where we place that warmth of, I hear you, I see yeah. you, I understand. Human I connection. I love the benchmarking time over the comp plan and saying, okay, if we, if we look at time of someone who's on this track, this is where they should be at different parts in the comp plan. That's something, the powerful framework exercise, anyone who's an executive on the line can do with your marketing, your sales yeah. team saying, hey, if these are our alphas or whatever we call them in your organization, right, they should be tracking at this level. They're the ones raising their hand. This is what we expect them to do. And then you've also talked about coaching as a reward. There are 
so many, especially we said in a digital world with our session today, I have seen not only the one-on-one -on -one over the phone, over the Zoom coaching as a reward, but I have seen a lot of these exclusive events as a reward yep. uh, in cultures today that I, I kind of love that. It's like, yeah, they get the you could go on this weekend getaway with your family and the CEO and their family. And guess what? It's, you know, it's just the top 10 people that win this contest. It's not for everybody. And man, the mentorship and the coaching that happens in some of that, all that physical stuff that you can't do with AI, the stuff where you, you get yeah. to go to a dinner table. And there's an organization in Arizona that we had their previous president speak on one of our sessions. And part of their culture is that when you hit I believe it's rank four in their program that you fly in the corporate and you spend a day with yeah. the corporate team. And yeah. so they had this, this beautiful culture of, Hey, when you get to rank four, or you get to rank five in our program, you get on a plane and you come and hang with us for a day. And it was not, it wasn't easy. This was a commitment from their corporate team, but they did the work in that framework of saying, you know what, each Thursday or whatever that day was, right. We're going to be hosting on Thursdays, and and we're going to have a bunch of our leaders here who have won to spend the day with them and plug it in and get them right. set for their track of what's next. I've seen others use coaching as rewards uh, well, by bringing in corporate leads at a specific rank. So when someone gets to a specific rank in the framework, they now get leads from the company website because they've cracked a certain rank and they've done the training. I don't think it's an either or, as Adrian as was saying too, it's not It's not, yes, I have an LMS with AI learning or, or no, you have human physical coaching. It's both, everybody. You want to have a system that scales with technology to where your, your education, your learning can be happening daily inside of an LMS system. But then you also want that human part of someone to be able to say, oh my gosh, I know exactly how you feel. I've been through a death in my family and from losing a child too. And yet, wow, you know what? It's going to get back on track. It's going to be here for you when you're through that. And you're going to get back on track. Like That's that the beauty. human stuff is so beautiful. Yeah. And so that's beautiful. the beauty of it. Yeah. yeah. And that's why that's why our industry is is what it is. Right. That's the beauty yeah. of it is that we do say, take a breath, yeah. take, take a breath. And yeah. and for so many times and for leaders, I know I didn't take a breath. It was go, 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 mm -hmm. go, go. But what I have found the conversation and I actually a, a couple of years ago, uh, we were doing just that when you got to X, you know, where there was um princess in training or premier in training. So we would do these universities, if you will, or these rank advancements, if you will, because you talked about location. Where do we have this? I yeah. think we should get back to popping up in restaurants or yeah, when fun. you were a startup, that's what you did, right? Sure. And it doesn't have to be costly. So that's where I talk about Agreed. it being phenomenal. I did a coaching session for a group. Literally, it was 30 minutes just last week. And it was all of us and we were on a Zoom, but you leave with just like that shot in the arm going, okay, I can do this. And my, my point was a few years ago, I started hearing from leaders about mental wellness and mm -hmm. their mental health. While they were leaders in this business and they were doing well and they were enjoying it, life was happening around them, mm -hmm. uh, whether it was losses of family members or injuries or, or catastrophic things that have happened and how they wanted to just a moment to be seen in that light as a person that's part of the organization, that's making the organization run, but also I'm a human person on the other side of that dollar, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's why coaching is so right and relevant right now. Nikki talks about it all the time. I learned mm -hmm. from her, right? Mm -hmm. Talked the first time I was like, everybody needs a coach. Yeah. <laughs> and in this digital world, it's, it is bringing it together. I mean, we see stuff all the time, gang. You can rent a cool, unique property on Airbnb and you can get 10 couples out. I mean, you can rent entire, literally acres of land and get 10 huts at the same time and have fun. Like it's, there's all kinds of options today that are not expensive, that are fun ways to get people together. And you're, you're only bound by your creativeness in the, what you do online and what you do on zoom. And then what you do off offline and in person, as you put together yeah. a, a program that shows that you love and care about people where they're at and that it is a track for them to run on. Mm -hmm. Powerful thought. Yeah, it is a track for them to run on. And I, I want to I want to clarify something because I know probably some leaders are going to go, okay, now wait a minute. You know, we're not doctors. We're not psychiatrists. We're not. And that's not what I mean. That's why I said the data is so important because you can find yourself and I'm raising my hand where I've gone off into, uh, you know, a deep end of the pool. And I'm like, wait, how do we even get here? So you want to bring it back to the data. But there are some times where I just go, so how are you? And the next thing I'm, I'm like, wow, people aren't even asking 
how you're doing. So yeah, Ben, we're going to talk about the business. Looks like you're doing great. Last week you had two shows, da, 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 da. but how are you doing? Incorporate yeah. that. It takes you 30 seconds. Yeah. And then say, let's get through this. And if I have a few minutes at the end, talk about some other things or whatever I can do to help support your business. I have to keep it to the business because sometimes you go, oh my gosh, I've been on the phone for 30 minutes and we talked oh, nothing course. Yeah, you about can't the do number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you got to get back yeah. to the numbers. And, but it is the whole person at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Things. Absolutely. Yeah. Great insights. Thank you so much for sharing that. Our third question is actually, what are some of the pitfalls that you've seen <laughs> others hit that you'd like to encourage the listeners to avoid? I think the pitfalls would be not making time to do it, figuring out, saying, oh my gosh, this is bigger than I thought, or excuse me, I don't have the support or, or whatever that is. Figure out a way to do it. Because right now, I, I think everybody is so busy. But I always say, are you busy being busy or are you really busy? Because a lot of times people are busy being busy. You know, mm -hmm. especially in this, you know, I used to tell people I coach, I said, I know how hard it is to get yourself out of your office. Maybe you're just going to grab a glass of water and all of a sudden you see the trash needs to be emptied or you see this and then you get off track. So pitfall would be making time to do it in some form of fashion, whether it was like Ben was saying, incentive around it, uh, giving them a track to run on because people, we still like to run. We like to win. We love that friendly competitiveness, mm -hmm. right? And you can bring your sisters and your brothers along with you. Ben, you talked about something even with the family. That's huge, you know, because so many mm -hmm. times I had events, I wasn't able to bring the family, but circling around the family. So I would say a, a pitfall would be make it a priority to do it. Make it a priority to really get in there granularly and see what some of the nuggets are that maybe we could be missing because we've been so busy or we're trying to figure out and hedge what's coming ahead of us. Another pitfall could be really deciding. And this is why I love executives when they go into their fishbowl. Pitfall is really what do we want? I've been in situations where we know, okay, we might be a little bit down, but we've lost the core competencies of what we really want to do. What is our mission? Why are we here? What do we want? So just as we would ask someone we're coaching, we need to ask our internal teams the same thing because we can go, oh, well, this is down or free shipping didn't do this or whatever. And then we're like, wait a minute, but what was the end goal? Did we understand the assignment? So mm -hmm. I think that a lot of times when we lose our focus, so goes the field. So I think we have to be very clear about our intentions. Everything else will work itself out because we have the numbers. We know what we don't want from an ROI perspective and a budget perspective. But going back to the framework, how do we make sure that we are giving them what they need within the constructs of the frame, therefore getting what we want, they're getting what they want. Yeah, those would be the two things is getting back to the core competencies, using the data for that, and then making time to do the coaching, not being afraid of virtual coaching. Um, I know that when we had to all go virtual, it was a quick turnaround for, for all of us on this call that know on this, on this podcast, no, it was a quick turnaround. And we were so afraid we were going to lose the connection. And I think there was a time where it got a little, a little gray. It got a little quiet out there. The third thing would be figuring out a way within your organization to do both, yeah. right? Maybe half the team stays back. Maybe half the team goes because someone's got to watch the farm while you're out, you know, herding the cattle. So, you know, so I think that that's, that's a thing to do is like, how do you merge? The third thing is the pitfall could be, how do we merge it? Do we go all virtual or do we go virtual and in person? I think it's a combination of both. Like we talked about earlier. Yeah. You know, we're seeing that hybrid model in huge ways of creating events that are so exciting you want to be there. So we're getting people back out of like, oh, you don't want to miss this. It's too much fun. You don't but, want to miss this. But yeah, but still having the the option, like it's unheard of to not have a replay option on an event today. Right. It's just what our culture is now. Right. And so maybe it's that no, we're not streaming it live. But you can get the replay a week later. Right. So you really want to be there. Yeah. You know, you know? it's exactly. not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same great, energy. That's what we yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what you do. Yeah. Nope. You, you can't watch it live. You can't, you know, if you, if you, you got to, what they used to say all the time, you got to show up to go up. Yeah. A thousand percent. Yeah. Um, you know, and then we've got the social media capability of we can sneak in your living room anytime and you're like, dang, I should have gone. So using yeah. that along with having that virtual version on the end. And you know what? I have to say, if it's very exclusive, I probably wouldn't offer a replay. Oh, exactly. Yeah. It depends <laughs> on the type of event. That's, that's if we're doing a national you know? conference. I was speaking to a national yeah, conference, yeah. but if you're a lot of yeah. these leader events, yeah, you got to show up to get there, gang. Um, the leadership yeah. events for sure. If it's, if it's a 10 couple, 20 couple event. You're, you're probably not going to make that available to someone who didn't make it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Two things you said real quick, just to, I love giving book recommendations to the executives listening. 
And when you talked about getting back to context, Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why, if you haven't read it yet, would yeah. be a wonderful book for you to be reminded of because you got to keep going back. A lot of these coaching questions, both to your internal staff and to your promoters in the field, come back to reminding people of themselves saying why they got started in the first place. It's a, it's a key part about it brings them back to the impact they wanted to make in both their own life and in others' lives and everything else. And so if you haven't read that yet, powerful book. And then because this is Women in Leadership Series, we need a powerful lady book here. Patty McCord, love Patty from Netflix. So incredible executive. Patty wrote a book called Powerful, Building a Culture of Freedom and Responsibility. Yeah. And the way we interact with each other and people. Uh, Patio's book is phenomenal on audio for all my audiobook friends uh, listening to the, the podcast or watching on the stream today. So if you want to go grab it on Audible, Powerful, just type in Powerful and it'll pop right up but it's building a culture of freedom and responsibility by Patty McCord. That's a double C. That's that uh, Irish McCord on the back end. Again. <laughs> so that uh, phenomenal read for us today. I got to just say yeah. thank you, Adrian, for this time. This is such a wonderful session. So grateful that you took the time to come out here and tackle the questions that were asked inside of the forum and wishing you just all the best in the lives you touch every day and the people you work with. Thank you, uh, thank you yeah. for uh, loving people enough to be there for them, which is literally what coaching is all about. Thank you yeah. for having us on. Let's thank you. You got it. As a wrap up, we'll go to Gail for those who are not on the stream for where they can go ahead and find the next sessions. Thank you so much for sharing your insights, Adrian. Uh, I'm sure that everybody listening and everybody watching have learned so much from you today. If you're listening on uh, Spotify, we're actually uh, on YouTube as well. You can watch live streams every Thursday on LinkedIn. And we are on Spotify, radio, Apple Podcasts. And thank you for listening, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye, Bye for now.